Okay, so this is probably going to take a bit of time, but I think um, if you've spent the time doing the practice tests that I've posted for you, that um, you will find this will be really helpful for your own test. And also, you can always fast forward through the parts that you know you got right, or just double quick, quickly double check them. Okay, so let's get going. It says, Part A, for the given periodic function by f at x, the pattern will continue. State f at 75. So I've drawn this on just to save a bit of time. Obviously, you know that the pattern goes like there. There's one, boom, 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 boom. There's two. Um, and so now you just had to continue from this point. So there's one complete cycle. So 5 to 10 before I finished it. So do, 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 do. 10, this will be 15. All right, so that's pretty easy. And it says, what will f at 75 be? Well, every 5, it's starting to repeat. So every 5, it has to be at 0. So your answer here is just simply 0. Okay, number 2 here. We have graph y equals 3 cos 2x minus 100, um, 2x, sorry, between minus 180 degrees and 360 degrees. So first thing you need to know is... Um, you know, you want to put your, your scale on it, and then you need to know what is the period. So I know the amplitude is 3. There's no horizontal shift, or sorry, vertical shift. This is just my domain. So there's no shift. That means the axis will be here. So it's a cosine function, and you should quickly know that cosine goes like this. If you don't, you can always plug in those critical points um, between 0 and 360, you know, like 0, 90, 180, 270, 360, and then you could graph it very quickly. Your calculator will give you the zeros and ones and minus one. So I want an amplitude of three. So that means it has to go up to three and down to three. It's going to have a period. The K value is two. So period is going to be 360 over two. So that means I'm going to have one period every 180 degrees. So it's a positive cosine function. That means I'm going to start at the highest point. I'm going to end at the highest point after 180 degrees and after 360 degrees. Um, and we're also going the other way. So I want to know um, this point right here. Those are all my peaks for the graphs. The troughs will always be halfway between each of those peaks. So at 90, that will be the lowest point. At 45, it's going to cross the axis, so, which is halfway between here, right? Another halfway between here for your other point. So here's one side of the graph. And if we go like this, and then the same thing's going to happen again. So 45 and at minus 3. So here we go again. And another 45 degrees from this one and up to there, and the same thing on this side. So you should be able to quickly sketch these. We've got our lowest point, our zero, our highest point. Okay, so there's, there's my graph. Okay, next page. Determine a cosine equation for the graph below. Determine a sine equation that includes a reflection in the x-axis. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is figure out where the axis is and what is the amplitude. So if you look here, this is, the scale might not be very clear to you, as it wasn't to me either, but I can see that it's going from 2.5 to minus 0.5. So that's a spread of 3 from top to bottom, right? So 3, half of 3 is 1.5, and 2.5 and minus 1.5 is going to take me two, one. So that's going to be my or a vertical shift or the axis. Okay, so I can see from the axis here then that the amplitude is going to be one, two, three, or from here, one, two, three, whatever you want. And that's, um, so that's going to be three. I don't know if I can see the period on here. Let me see if I have a better copy. So amplitude is 3, so a positive, a cosine function. If you were going to do cosine, you're going to start with a negative cos, right? Because you're starting at the lowest point, 
So I have minus 3 cos. Now the only problem I don't have here is I can't read the scale. Probably because it didn't show up. So this is supposed to be 45 degrees here. 45 degrees and then 90 degrees and so on. So I have one complete cycle in 90 degrees. So the period is 90 degrees. So K is equal to, remember we said period is 360 divided by K. So K is 360 over P, which is 90. So that gives me a K of 4. So I'm going to have, oh sorry, this isn't 3. That's another thing you have to be careful with. What a bad teacher. From 1 to 2.5 isn't 3, it's only 1.5. So minus 1.5 cos, and my K is 4. I don't have any shift if I start here. That's horizontal shift, but I have a vertical shift up 1. So there's minus 1.5 cos 4x plus 1. Now, if I want to determine a sine equation that includes a reflection, that means they want me to use a negative sine function. And you should have had a y equals here too. That's very bad format. So y equals a negative sine function, negative sine. So negative sine would be starting here, right? See how it's negative? It's going down first. So that means it's been shifted. This is minus 45. So halfway between 0 and 45. That's going to be, what, 22 and a half, right? So I'm going to so say sine 4 and then x, and I've shifted it to the left. So that means plus 22.5 degrees plus 1. Now, if you're unsure whether or not you need brackets here or not, if you didn't put brackets in here, that would have mean meant that you would have to factor out a 4 from this, which wouldn't be right. So this is the actual transformation to the left, 22.5 degrees. Okay, so that's your... Oh, I guess it wasn't showing you that. There we go. So we have minus 4, minus... Huh, minus 1.5, thank you, sine 4x plus 22.5 degrees plus 1. So it has the same. We didn't change the k value. We didn't change the axis. We didn't change the amplitude. But we did talk about whether or not it was going to be a positive or a negative. Now, if they wanted a positive cosine function here, you could very easily change that by just saying y equals 1.5 cos. Now, you're going to have to have a shift, right? Because this would be where positive cosine, positive cos would start here. So cos, and then you'd have 4, and you shifted it to the right, so that's x minus 45 degrees plus 1. So there's three different equations for exactly the same function. Okay, so graph sine x plus 30 degrees minus 2. So this time you have to think you we're getting um, negative sine function. So negative sine function, and I want it to be um, shifted to the left, 30 degrees, and down 2. So I'm going to put my axis on first. Always good to put on your axis, right? So minus 2 is my axis, so I'm going to put a dotted line through here. Now your teacher might not give you a domain like this. The, minus 180 to 180. They might just say for two cycles or something. You have to see what uh, what your teacher likes. Okay, so for this one now, I have a negative sine function shifted to the left 30 degrees down 2. So this says plus 30. Remember, you go to the left 30. I'm going to get a different color just because it's getting too purpley here. So if it's a negative sine function, I'm starting on the axis here. My amplitude is 1, right? So it's because it's minus 1 sine. So that means my next point is going to go, my, my point is going to go down, and it's 1. So down 1. Now the question is, 
where is this one going to be along here? So because the period, period is 360 degrees, right? Because I don't have a cave here. K is just one. So 360 degrees divided by four means every 90 degrees, I have either a zero or a maximum or a minimum. Because it's a negative sine function, my next point will be a minimum. So I'm going to go 90 degrees from here, which is going to take me to 60, right? 30 plus 90 is 60. So that's going to be my lowest point right here. Now I'm going to add another 90 to this point. So this was 60 degrees. Um, yeah, every two is 30. 30, 60, 90. So this is going to be 120. So to 60, I'm going to add 90 degrees. That's going to be 150. That's going to bring me back to here. So my function is going like this. I should probably use a pencil because it's, it's pretty flat. And then it's going to go up a little bit. Not all the way to 1 though because it would be 90 degrees from here when it reaches a height of 1. Now on this side I'm at minus 30, so I'm going to go to minus 120 for my next point, and that's going to be up one. So it's going to be here. And similarly on this side, it's kind of hard to draw these things, especially when they're so flat. So this is going to come down like this, but not quite to the axis. So there's my graph for that one. Now the next one, graph one half cos x divided by 3 plus 20 plus 3 halves. Okay, so right away I need two things. I need a scale. So I'm going to do, um, let's do, this is 1, this is 2. 1, 2, minus 1, and minus 2. And 360. So I should have written this all on before we started. I'm sorry. So we'll do every 30. So it's going to be 60, 120, and so on. So that means 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330, 360. And same thing going the other way. So let, let's just not worry too much about that right now. But the next thing you have to watch out is for a question like this. Your teacher is bound to give you one that tries to trick you. And you know from all the work you've done on transformations that you have to factor out minus one third or else you'll have the wrong shift. So I'm going to write out what the equation looks like when it's factored. So your K is, we've got minus one third and then we have X so 20 divided by minus one third, that's negative 60 degrees, and then plus three halves. So I don't know if your teacher teaches you how to graph using mapping rules, and that's what I would have expected my students to use on this one because it's really difficult to um, find points. I mean, you, you kind of get the idea here. Um, that you have, you have a shift, so you could write in your um, your axis. So one and a half for my axis. I'm going to put that on here. We'll definitely be using that. So this is y equals three halves. Now, what I would have done myself is I would have thought a little bit about the the cosine function, the key points on it. So as you know, it starts and ends at the highest, lowest in the middle, zeros in the quarter marks. So this is what we've got. And of course, this way as well would keep going. So I'm going to pick some points. Now, I'm going to cheat a little bit because I've done this before. So I'm going to know to use minus 90 degrees and zero. And we're going to do a mapping rule. So just hang on. So we have when x is 0, y is 1, when x is 90 degrees, that was 0 degrees, 
90 degrees we had a zero when we had 180 we had minus one so this is a, the mapping rule approach to graphing and we have 270 degrees and zero and I'm going to stop there now if I use a mapping rule remember that from early and transformations you say what happens to x and y what do you do to every x and every y so for this one you'd say I'm going to multiply x remember it's reverse of what you think you're not going to divide by minus a third but multiply by minus three so I have minus three x plus sixty that's your x values and your y's are just one half y plus three halves one half y plus three halves so I can use this mapping rule to determine these key points to find out where this graph is going to be. Now, if you take a look here, your k value is minus one third, or your k is one third. It's never, this means it's a reflection about the y axis, which is, um, you know, for a trig function, if I reflected this, I would just have the same function, right? If I move this, flip it over. Um, a little different for the sine function, though. Okay, so let's go back here. So we're going to take this point and we're going to find a new point. So minus 90 times minus 3 is 270 plus 60. 270 plus 60 is 330 degrees. 330 degrees and my y value is just going to be 3 halves. So there's one point on my graph. I'm going to put it on right now. 330 so we're going by 30s, right? So 330 and one and a half. That's right on the axis here. Right there. Okay, so let's do another point. So we have zero degrees and one. So zero times minus three is zero plus 60. That's 60 degrees and a half plus three halves is two, four halves, right? So that's two. So 60 degrees and two. 60 degrees and 2 and then um, you could probably figure out where the next point's going to be because this is going down right so this is like this and then one two three four five six seven eight nine away two three four five seven eight nine away I'm back on the axis here so we'll just continue with just these few points here for a minute and see where we get to. So 90 times minus 3 is minus 270 plus 60 is minus 210. Minus 210 and 3 halves. And that's exactly where we should be here. So that was minus 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, 210. So this was minus 210 here. And I'm right there. So you can see that this is just half of the graph and why is it only a half well because the period for this function if the k is one third the period is going to be equal to 360 divided by one third or 1080 degrees so this is only 720 right from here to here so 210 240 270 300 330 360 minus 360. Okay, so let's see if we can get one more point out of this. Um, let's try the... I think that's probably all I had here. 0 and 1. Do we do 0 and 1? Yes, we've got 60 and 2. So this, from here on, this is going to be going down very gradually. And the same thing on this side. So we have the function that's going up, there's the max, the zero, it's going down to a minimum. The minimum isn't till past this because if you if you think about this for a minute, every one quarter, one quarter of this, what's one quarter of 1080? 1080 divided by four is 270 degrees. So from here to here, here to here is 270. Right, 270 and 60 would give me 330. So another 270 from 60 gives me 210. Another 270 from here would give me 480. So 
my lowest point is not out till 480, which isn't going to be on this graph. Okay, so that's about all you can do. That's kind of a tricky question, right? So let's go to 